Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Feinstein, and I'm going to try to introduce you to the night sky during the first week or so of October. If you're in your sukkah and you look through the branches and what you have hanging from there, it's going to be difficult to see what I'm talking about. So step outside, find an area where you can see most of the sky without trees in the way. And let's talk about what it takes to understand and recognize the night sky. The first thing you have to do is you have to be certain to adapt your eyes to the dark. Don't go out right after watching TV or reading a brightly lit book. It will take about a half an hour in dim light to adapt your eyes. You can do this by watching the first stars pop out in the sky for about a half an hour. Or you can walk around indoors with sunglasses on. That will help your eyes to open up. So what is the best time to view the night sky? Well, it's not what's called astronomical darkness until about an hour and a half after sunset. You can check that hour in your local paper or online. Lay down on your back on a thick towel or some such so that you can view the sky directly overhead because that's the part of the sky we're going to be talking about mostly. The bright constellations that I will be pointing out to you today are Cygnus the Swan, Pegasus the Horse, also viewed in the sky as the Big Square, and Cassiopeia. The Greeks thought of her as a queen or we view it as a W in the sky or a zigzag, depending upon the orientation. The bright stars that we'll be looking at straight up are the three famous stars that form the summer triangle, Vega, Deneb, and Altair. I'll be showing you the sky views on a PowerPoint, which I will now endeavor to open up and share with you. Here we are. When you first look at the night sky, all it looks like is a bunch of stars. These few labels labeling the bright stars overhead aren't in the sky and nothing else has labels at all and that's what makes it such a trick to view the night sky well the idea is to get yourself a map that has the names of the things you're looking at and the roads that draw out the constellations Here we are. This is the same view of the night sky that we were just looking at back here. Stars are in the same place. Here's Vega, here's Deneb, and Altair is right up here. So there's your summer triangle. We don't have that drawn out, but we do have the other constellations drawn out. The one directly above you looks a lot like a cross until you carry your eyes down the long wings of the swan. The swan is flying this, in this direction. This is the nose of the swan, this is the back end of the swan. And Deneb, the bright star that we've talked about, is there at the swan's tail end. The swan flies down the Milky Way. This cloud in the middle of our picture may be seen if it's a really good, clear night, but there's a good chance that if you're in town and there's a fair amount of light around, that may not be noticeable, but most of the time, this patch of the Milky Way right in Cygnus's belly area 
you can usually see a fog of whiteness there that looks a little bit like a very dim cloud, and that is a bit of the Milky Way view. The other, the other constellation that I'd like you to notice is the big square. This is off a bit to the east. I forgot to mention, this is a view looking to the northeast, laying down facing, facing the northeast. So you'll see the big square, which is actually uh, the most easily recognized part of Pegasus, the famous flying horse. It doesn't look much like a horse in the sky, but the big square is an interesting formation that can be used to find other bright items in this, uh, other dim items in the sky. Now the third constellation that we're going to talk about is Cassiopeia. Here, somewhat lower in the sky, we see this zigzag sh shape. If it was lying on its side, it would look like a W. If it was flipped over the other way, as it rotates around in the sky, it would look like an M. But at this point in time, it just looks like a zigzag in the sky. To further illustrate the constellations, we can add drawings that show the, they'll come up here shortly, I think. Oh, that's the problem. Here they are. Here are our three bright constellations. The Swan, also known as the Northern Cross, Pegasus, the horse with a large square body, and here's Cassiopeia, the queen. She's actually chained to that chair. I won't give you the whole story on the queen, but she fell out of favor with, I think, Zeus, ended up getting chained to that chair. But the zigzag is a very commonly uh, found and easily seen uh, constellation in the, uh, in, the, in the sky. Now I'd like to move on beyond the constellations to the bright stars, the planets that we see in the sky. Tonight, there are three planets in the sky. Mars is in the east. Sadly, it's somewhat close to the horizon and tall trees too nearby you will block the view. You may have to move around a bit. You're gonna to have to stand up and move around to see the planets. Saturn and Jupiter are a pair of bright eyes looking at you in the south. They're about one third of the way up the sky from the horizon. They'll look interesting naked eye. If, if somebody in your group has a small telescope, they look a whole lot better. Mars doesn't look a whole lot different in a telescope than then it does naked eye because it is, uh, doesn't have the class that Saturn and Jupiter have. Saturn shows its rings and Jupiter combines with its four moons to make a very pretty picture. Here we are looking again at the night sky in the southeast view, which places the positions of Mars Saturn and Jupiter. You'll notice that Mars is a kind of an orangish color. Some people say red. Jupiter is a bright, pretty white color. Saturn takes on a bit of a creamy appearance. I hope you've enjoyed this um, quick view of the night sky, and I hope it helps you find your way around. The moon may be a problem on the 6th because it rises at 930. And that will, that will uh, make it difficult to see Mars, although you may be lucky and still be able to see Mars. Uh, later on in the week, on the Friday and Saturday uh, following, uh, it's more likely that the moon, since it rises a couple of hours later, that you'll be able to see Mars, Saturn, and Jupiter pretty much in similar positions as they appear, as they appear here. 
Thanks for sticking by with me, and I hope you get a chance to look at the sky. <laughs>